Jonathan Wells went through the primary source literature and cited the original literature in a detailed and dispassionate discussion and was able to lay out how all these standard evidences that were used in textbooks of modern evolutionary theory, in fact, weren't evidence at all. And in fact, the textbooks weren't telling the true story. And it was a really eye-opening experience. I know for myself, uh, when I read the chapter about the Miller-Urey experiment, about this supposed experiment that where they really could understand how we got life from non-life because in the test tube they were able to produce presto changeo with a zap of electricity, the building blocks of life. I remember covering that when I was in high school biology and remembered uh, getting that explained. That, well, it's no great mystery how life began anymore because in fact we understand that because of this experiment done. And reading that chapter about how the Miller-Urey experiment had been completely sort of uh, misrepresented in recent textbooks and uh, what, that we're not keeping up to date with the latest science. That was an eye-opening experience. I think Jonathan Wells uh, should be thanked by the scientific community for helping them to clean up their act. Even the Darwinists who can't stand Jonathan Wells really owe a debt to him because they were using in their textbooks evidence that they should have been ashamed of, evidence that they themselves, when push came to shove, would have to admit wasn't true, and was no longer good science, and it was, but they didn't take them out of the textbooks until Jonathan Wells wrote his book and forced the issue. And so things like the peppered moth myth, uh, things like Heckel's embryos, the scientific community, including Darwinists, should be eternally grateful to Jonathan Wells for forcing them to clean up their act and forcing this pseudoscience out of the textbooks. Of course, they're not grateful to them, they're angry at him, but that's really a testament that what's driving them is ideology, not science. They're more concerned about protecting their ideology of unguided Darwinism than they are about what the scientific evidence says. And uh, I think if you look at most of the attacks and so-called uh, criticism of Jonathan Wells, most of them don't actually focus on the science of what he talked about, or they misstate and caricature what he's saying and attack a straw man. And uh, I'm a social scientist, not a natural scientist, but when I see people responding in debates where they just attack a straw man, that is an indication that they have something to hide. And it's an indication usually that their own position is really weak. Because if they had the evidence to refute what Jonathan Wells was going to say, they wouldn't attack a straw man. They'd actually attack specifically what he was actually saying, not their caricature of it. And the fact that they can't uh, do anything but attack a straw man shows that uh, the weakness of their position.